Now, a few days ago, I reviewed the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 ACH. That's the AMD variant running the Ryzen 7 5800H processor. It had the GTX 1650 GPU. I absolutely loved it, especially for its price. If you could actually find it here in the United States, uh, Micro Center, of course, has it. Link will be in the description below. But I also unboxed its Intel counterpart. That's the one we're gonna look at today. And this is nothing to sneeze at either. It has that same 16 inch 2.5K display, 120 Hertz, 350 nits. I actually got brighter in terms of my measurements, and it really has a nice processor, the Core i7 11370H processor. That's the same one you're gonna find in the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. We're gonna have more on that very soon as I have one coming to the studio. We're gonna see if this all comes together to make this yet another winner. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 with the Intel processor. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now I have the Core i7 11370H processor, that model I did get from Lenovo, but there is a model available here in the US. You could pick it up at Amazon. That comes in at $929.99. I'm not sure about the supply right now because it's showing temporarily unavailable, but as more stock comes in, I will let everybody know. Now I've already unboxed this laptop along with its AMD counterpart a few weeks ago. Check out the link below if you haven't checked it out. I highly encourage you to do so. And I've already did my full review of the AMD model. Again, link will be in the description below. And one of the things I love about this laptop is its beautiful look and build with its pretty much all metal design and its cloud gray finish. I really definitely think this is a beautiful looking laptop, very modern looking. And it's pretty portable for a 16 inch laptop with a weight of 1.9 kilograms or 4.19 pounds, making it easy to travel with. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about this 16 inch laptop. And here it is next to its AMD counterpart that has the storm gray finish, that's that dark gray. Now that will show a little bit more fingerprints than the cloud gray, which is a lighter silver, showing a lot less fingerprints, although both units do a good job on hiding fingerprints. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get one USB-C port. You can charge on that port. You get an HDMI 1.4B port. You get a USB-C port that's also a Thunderbolt 4 port, full service, meaning it supports data charge and display out. And finally, you get your audio jack. Moving over to the right side, it's good to see a full-size SD card reader. But one thing to note, the cards do not sit flush with the unit, as you see here. And finally, you get two USB 3.2 Type-A Gen 1 ports to round out the ports on this laptop. And I gotta say, it's a pretty good port selection. Now I've already gone inside this laptop and showed you how to get inside this laptop in that video I did a few weeks back. The thing to note here is just take your time, remove the screws, and then just use some kind of pry tool or a guitar pick, work your way around the edges, take your time. You don't wanna break any of the plastic clips, but it is pretty easy to get inside. Now, once inside, you'll notice those dual fans for the cooling. We'll get into the thermals and the surface temperatures in just a little bit. And you will notice that it has a 75 watt hour battery. We're going to get into the battery life and charging times later on in this video. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user upgradable. Now, my review unit comes with a PCIe NVMe SSD storage. And as you can see from these reads and writes, excellent results. Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. That means you cannot upgrade it yourself. Now, my review unit comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM running in dual channel mode, giving you maximum performance. It has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1 and both working very well. Now, this is the Intel Wi-Fi 6 and it is slotted in. That means you can upgrade it down the road. You can swap it out if you have any issues, which is always great. It's not soldered into the motherboard like a lot of other laptops. 
And while we're inside, let's take a look at that 75 watt hour battery, which is a pretty decent size for the 16 inch laptop. And it did really well on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, scoring nine hours and seven minutes, outlasting its AMD counterpart, which came in at seven hours and 23 minutes. So what does this mean in real world mixed usage? You're looking at anywhere from seven to eight hours. But of course, your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing with this laptop. And it comes with a 95 watt USB-C power adapter that supports rapid charge, which will give you about three hours worth of charge for only 15 minutes. And that's pretty good. Now, full charge will be about 90 minutes or so, and that's pretty fast. Now this has a really nice display. What we're looking at here is a 16 inch 2.5K display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's an IPS non-touch display that will get as bright as 350 nits according to Lenovo. I actually measured 362 nits even better. So this is gonna be good for both indoor and outdoor use, especially since it's not a glossy display, it's a matte display so you don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections and that's always good. And I love the fact that this has 120 hertz refresh rate. That means you're going to have some really smooth scrolling when it comes to web browsing. It's going to be a more enhanced gaming experience, a lot more fluid than you would have with, a, say, a 60 hertz display. It's going to be that much better, less jelly effect. It's going to be nice and smooth. And just like its AMD counterpart, you're getting the really deep blacks, the good white points, the good contrast on this, and you also get the color accuracy with a 1.39 Delta E score. Anything below two is considered good. And you get decent coverage of the color gamut, 96% sRGB, 72% Adobe RGB, 72% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 66% NTSC. So if you're a content creator, this is a decent choice if you want to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And one of the biggest benefits of having a 16 inch display with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio means you're going to get more display and less bezels, which always gives it a sleek and modern look. And you're going to see more on the display. You do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You'll see more in terms of spreadsheets, Word documents and the like. So this is the front facing camera on the Intel version. And it's the, of course, the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 and it's a 720p 30 frames per second webcam and just like its amd counterpart this is a windows hello camera that means you can log in with face recognition and of course this also doesn't have a fingerprint scanner so again the only way for you to log in is with this uh, windows hello camera or, or unless you use of course a passcode or a password now as far as the audio quality of the internal mics let me know and what do you think about the video quality as well pretty much the same i guess uh let me know in that comment section below now this is running the Intel Core i7-11370H processor, a six core processor from Intel, part of that Tiger Lake family that we've seen. And it also has the MX450 GPU. It's a 25 watt variant with two gigabytes of video RAM. And as you can see from these results, it's going to be very good for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked fine. But as you can see from these numbers, it's not gonna be quite as good as the eight core Ryzen 7 5800H processor that you get with the 16 ACH variant of this. That's the AMD one that I just reviewed. So if you want better multi-core performance, check out that laptop. That's gonna give you the better performance. It also has the NVIDIA GTX 1650 GPU. And and that will give you a little bit more graphics horsepower as well. But having said that, this performance has been good enough to do the things you want to do as far as everyday tasks. You could also game on this if you check out some of these settings. If you're going to go with the lower settings, you're going to get the more playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. But one thing that this can do that the AMD variant cannot do is that you can connect an external GPU to this if you want extra graphics horsepower. And that's thanks to the Thunderbolt 4, which is a full service USB-C port that this has, something you don't get with the AMD model. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, the CPU would turbo boost up to 4 gigahertz for about 10 seconds and reach a core temperature of 99 degrees Celsius. Then it would drop down to anywhere between 1.4 and 3.1 gigahertz to maintain a cooler 83 degrees Celsius. So you will notice thermal throttling under heavy load. And I noticed under heavy load, it would start to heat up by the keyboard and on the underside, as you can see from these surface temperatures. 
But one thing to keep in mind, it never heated up to the point where this becomes unusable, too hot to the touch. That never was an issue. And just like its AMD counterpart, this has a dual fan setup. And I didn't feel like the fans were overly loud, but you will notice them kick in under heavy load. But for normal everyday tasks, they remained relatively quiet. And when it comes to the keyboard, I have to say I do like it, although it is a bit on the shallow side. That was the same situation, of course, with the, its AMD counterpart. But as far as the tactile feedback, as far as the comfortable typing for extended periods of time, it's all there. You never feel like your fingers will bottom out. Now, it does have a six-row numeric keypad, so if you want to do some number crunching on Excel spreadsheets, you have that option. And it has the same two-stage backlight, just like the AMD model, which lights up white and it worked well in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And it has a nicely sized precision touchpad. Now, it's not a glass touchpad, but it is a very smooth surface. It's probably polymer or plastic, and it worked well. It was very responsive. That means you could do your two-finger scrolling, all the gestures. Everything worked very well, smooth and responsive. And it has the same Dolby Atmos speakers, which are downward firing speakers. And I would say they're so-so, not the strong suit, as I mentioned in this laptop. Same goes with the AMD model, same thing here. Could stand to be a bit louder. There is a hint of bass and the mids, I would say, are decent. I would say overall, these are so-so. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 with the Intel processor here for 2021? I gotta say, very impressed once again. This is a 16 inch 2.5K display, 120 Hertz display, and I love the fact that it is a matte display, no unnecessary glare or reflections. You get great battery life. In fact, the battery life was better on this model than its AMD counterpart. I love the fact that this has a Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 port, something that the AMD model doesn't have. It also has a display port via the USB-C, and that's also a nice added bonus. It has a fast memory card reader, which is always great, although the cards do not sit flush with the unit, as you saw in the video. But I like its sleek aluminum case, and I like the fact that it's very durable, rock-solid build construction. And I like the performance out of that Core i7-11370H processor with that MX450 GPU, although not quite as good as its AMD counterpart, which had better multi-core performance and better graphics horsepower. The negatives, of course, is the fact that it has soldered RAM, it can get very hot under full load, and it does have that underwhelming speakers as far as the sound is concerned. But there are no deal breakers here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna give this an 89%, making the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro with that Intel variant definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy? IdeaPad 5 Pro, I looked at the AMD model, this is the Intel model, this is the cloud gray, we saw the storm gray on that AMD model, that's the darker gray. This will show a little bit less fingerprints, although both do not really show too many fingerprints. This is a really premium all metal design, especially for the price you're getting high end build construction. And I absolutely love that. Now the processor is not gonna be quite as good as the multi-core performance you get out of that Ryzen 7 5800H, but this Core i7 11370H is a nice six core processor, nice for everyday tasks, good for Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, it all worked well, especially because this has that 16 inch 2.5K display, 120 Hertz refresh rate. Everything's very smooth, very fluid. It's gonna be great for gaming, although you're not gonna get as good horsepower as the AMD model. This you could definitely game on certain settings as I showed with the numbers. The thermals here were decent as well, although the other one did a little bit better maintaining clock speeds. This one will throttle down under heavy load, never getting overly hot to the point where you can't touch it, but it will warm up when you are pushing the limits on this. Battery life is better on this model over its AMD counterpart, a little bit more than an hour, hour and a half better on this one, probably because this GPU doesn't draw as much power as that GTX 1650 does in the AMD model. But this will definitely give you pretty much all day battery life, not something we normally see on a 16 inch laptop here for 2021. So that's been pretty good. It has that 75 watt hour battery. Now, as far as availability is concerned, you can get it over at Amazon for the Core i5 model. Uh, it's not showing in stock right now, but it should come back in stock soon. As soon as it is, I will let everybody know where you can get it. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment 
in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. Thank you.